Welcome, everybody, on this auspicious occasion. Uh, let me add my congratulations to Amanda Olson. Um, I have the um, unique honor of having served on both juries, and um, it was a pleasure uh, twice over this spring to read through these. Um, and thank you to the Goethe Institute uh, for hosting us. Thank you so much for the great organization and um, everything you've done on behalf of, of this prize. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank my co-jurors for seeing this through to get alongside me. Um, Bettina Abarbanel, <laughs> Ross, Ross Benjamin, um, and Susan Harris over here, and uh, John Hargraves, who uh, couldn't be here this evening. Um, and um, we evaluated some 30 submissions, I believe it was. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at Walter. He did all, the, all, of the, um, all of the paperwork that made it possible for us to uh, work hard on the text themselves. Um, they came from a variety of small and large presses. Uh, there was fiction and nonfiction. There was poetry and there was prose. Um, and the decision-making process was a difficult one with so many good books and so many of them um, to read through and evaluate and yet ultimately the process was made very easy, easy uh, in the end by one special text which was uh, Charlotte Collins's rendition of uh, Robert Seethaler's Ein ganzes Leben as a whole life. Um, in, uh, in a moment uh, Susan Harris will be coming up here to give the laudation and we'll give you more detail about um, what we found so praiseworthy in this book. Um, I, for now, I'd just like to read our jury statement uh, to give you a flavor of um, what uh, we thought was so special about it and I'll read that for you. Uh, the jury for the Helen and Court Wolf Translators Prize takes great pleasure in announcing that the winner for 2017 um, is Charlotte Collins for her translation of Robert Zaytaler's A Whole Life. This novel, Robert Zaytaler's fifth and the first to be translated into English, is a model of compact beauty taking the reader from the protagonist's bleak childhood through the trials and tribulations and fleeting joys of his largely solitary adulthood in unhurried, unadorned, stirring prose. Charlotte Collins's masterful translation of this meditative novel perfectly captures the quiet, compelling tone of the original German language narrative of, as it says in the title, a whole life. Her gentle yet powerful diction recreates a worth, work that is both haunting and graceful. We are pleased to learn that Charlotte Collins is continuing to translate Robert Zaytaler's writing into English and make it accessible to an expanded international readership. Congratulations, Charlotte Collins. It is a pleasure to salute Charlotte Collins for her translation of Robert Zaytaler's A Whole Life. Helen and Kurt Wolf's invaluable contribution to English language, to Helen and Kurt Wolf's invaluable contribution to the dissemination and appreciation of world literature particularly to the largely monolingual U.S. market. Also paved the way for subse subsequent publishers of translation and provided a model for how that great responsibility and pleasure might be handled. As a publisher, I like to think that all of us in this field are continuing and following the Wolf's example in, and working in their footsteps. It is a delight and an honor to be involved and invited to sit on the jury for a, an award recognizing translation in their name. Charlotte's translation has been widely and enthusiastically reviewed, first in the UK, 
where one representative quote was, no praise is too high. And then in the US, it was shortlisted for last year's Man Booker International Prize, and the jury is delighted to select it now for the Wolf. I must mention that Charlotte's work was new to me. I did not know her as a translator, and I did not meet her, although we had been in the same place um, at, some, at several uh, London translation events. Uh, I did not meet Charlotte until March at a point when we had just about decided that she was the winner of the, of the wolf. It was agonizing to have, this act, to have this knowledge and not be able to share it. Um, and I, I, I was certainly not in a position to say, Charlotte, I'm so glad to meet you. I, I'm somewhat clairvoyant and think you're going to have some good news shortly. <laughs> But it was it is a but it was quite wonderful to make the acquaintance of her work and then of Charlotte herself. A whole life is a quiet book and very brief, but both adjectives are deceptive. The title comes from one character's comment: "You can buy a man's hours off him, you can steal his days from him, or you can rob him of his whole life." But no one can take away from any man so much as a single moment. That's the way it is. The book tells the story of one particular man's long and periodically dramatic life, starting with his birth around the turn of the 20th century and concluding at his death some 79 years later. He lives through enormous technological changes, but with the exception of the war, world events do not affect him so much as they pass him by. The orphaned Andreas Egger survives a brutal childhood in a remote Alpine village, then spends most of his life there in manual labor. He works to install cable cars in the village, finds and then loses love, has two memorable encounters with television, one involving Grace Kelly, the other the moon landing, both of which seem equally remote fights in World War II for only two months before being captured and then spends eight years in a Russian POW camp. He returns to a village changed quite, he returns to a changed village and deploys his strength and agility to set himself up as a mountain guide for the tourists that now frequent the area. He works well into old age. He is a man of few words but deep feeling. The sole romantic moment in the book comes when the taciturn Anders, at a, Andreas, at a loss for how he might propose to the woman who has complete, sent him head over heels, engages his fellow workers to arrange lights on the side of the mountain, saying, for you, Marie. The, mountain, the mountains are part of, his, part of his life throughout. They facilitate his, his wooing, they facilitate his marriage and the promise of family, but then capriciously wrench them from him in a devastating avalanche. From that point, his life will be one of solitude. Throughout, moments of high drama and the quotidian routine are described in a consistently even tone, reflecting th the protagonist's solid, stolid dignity and stoicism. Charlotte's English translation is all the more remarkable for the spareness of the original. Many reviewers and readers have commented on her ability to render Zaytaler's sparse, elegant prose. Charlotte's English version preserves the economy of the original, but renders it to extravagant effect. My fellow jurors, all celebrated translators, conducted an unusually rigorous review of the original text against the translation. As the non-German reading member of the jury, I was free to luxuriate in the sensitivity of Charlotte's translation and to appreciate what one juror referred to as her lovely, memorable word choices without hearing the original behind it. I fear I have not replicated Charlotte's elegance here in my remarks, but I will certainly uh, mimic her economy but I think that even Andreas would express delight with her translation. And as the non-German reading juror, 
I represent the many readers to whom Zay Teller's text is not accessible in the original, and for whom Charlotte has not only made this book available, but as the Wolf Prize recognizes, has done so brilliantly. Those of us who are now able to read this book in your rendition, thank you. All of us congratulate you. <laughs>